Hello there. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Adeola. You're welcome to the sixth episode of All Our Books Readers Review. All the links to the previous videos are down below, so please check them out after watching this video. And thank you to all of you who have encouraged me. Thank you because you like the story. Thank you because you're always looking forward to this program. And so far, I've been dropping a new video every Friday, 12.30 Eastern Time. If you have subscribed to this channel, you will always get a notification when it is on. If you are yet to subscribe and you like this video, please hit the subscription button right now. Subscribe, like, and share, and comment. Thank you so much for doing that. All right, so let's start to read Colors of Love. I'm on page 15 and I'm starting from the first paragraph. Introducing sex into a relationship is an extraordinary emotional commitment that is not easy for a female gender to get over quickly. If it results in pregnancy, it is worse. Pregnancy affects every aspect of the girl's life and only a little bit or none of the boys. She gets to carry the baby, go through all the pains from the beginning till the baby is born. Especially if the baby's arrival is sudden, the birth is bound to interrupt much in the mother's life. So when God says something is wrong, it is not for his sake, it is for ours. I know that's right, Carrie said. It's my mom saying that God has nothing to lose. You bear the consequence of your actions. If you acknowledge his presence, the Holy Spirit will encourage you. Yeni sighed. I was not thinking straight then. I was head over heels in love with Alan. What happened after you found out you became pregnant? Carrie asked. I told him I was pregnant, Yenny replied. He said he was not ready for a baby. I said I wasn't either. It just happened. He didn't believe me. He said I got pregnant so that he would marry me. He called me different names. A gold digger, blackmailer ungrateful, possessive, you name it. He called me names I never knew existed. So what did you do? Carrie asked amazed. I was staring at him like I had seen a ghost, she replied. We never fought. When arguments were getting heated up, he always slowed down and let me win the argument. It was always easy for him to apologize each time he thought he had offended me. That was why I was dazed as he ranted on and on until he said, You think you can ruin this for me, right? I bet you can't. And then he stomped out of my room. After he left, I broke down and cried like a baby. I didn't see him for the next two months. He didn't call, neither did I. I was not a gold digger. I was ready to face the consequence of what I did to myself. I was ready to be a single mother. Then he showed up with his mom on my last day in Enugu. I was still packing when they arrived. I was surprised to see them. But I offered them seats. They were silent for a long time. I guess the silence was becoming unbearable for them as it was for me because I had to break the silence by asking them to what I owed the visit. His mom spoke for him. He had a wife. I guess the girl he told me was his cousin. He only came to school in Nigeria because he wanted to meet his mother's side of the family and to learn the culture in Nigeria. He was more American than Nigerian. He had to return to the United States to manage the family business. Another reason why he studied administrative accounting. When she finished telling her story, I couldn't say a word. All I did was cry. I cried for wasted time, for believing lies, for allowing myself to fall a victim. The only question I asked them was about my pregnancy. I wanted to know what they would do about it. He had no answer. His mom wanted me to abort it. She also offered to give me enough money to start a new life, but 
I re refused both offers. The meeting ended with another disturbing silence. I didn't sleep a wink that night. I traveled back to Lagos State with a heavy heart. That was another story entirely. What would I tell my family, especially my mom? The moment I stepped into the house, my mom knew something was wrong. I couldn't deny it. I spilled it all out and she felt for me. She tried to talk me out of my sad mood to no avail. I carried the pregnancy for seven months and still had a premature still birth. What? Karen said. It was devastating. Then he continued. My life has never been the same since. I had much pain during labor. Each time I remember the agony I went through, I shudder with pain and fright, all mixed. I thought I was going insane. The more people sympathized with me, the more aggrieved I became. My life has been in a standstill ever since. Harry stood up to give her friend a hug. They hugged and cried together. She felt her friend's pain. By they calmed down about the same time and lay side by side on the bed. After a while, Carrie asked, what happened after that? My big sister to me sent me an invitation to come to America. She thought a change of environment might be of help to me. Has it been helpful? Yes and no. Yes, when I go shopping or sightseeing. I know when I am left to my thoughts. I know when I am left to babysit the kids. I remember my stillbirth baby who I loved so much, to whom I diverted the love I'd had for her father. I'm going to have to stop reading here today because um, it's been very emotional. You know, Carrie, I mean, Jenny went through a lot. And if you are a woman or a lady or a girl out there, you can empathize with her. Because first, she had a heartbreak. Second, she got pregnant. She wasn't expecting the pregnancy. And thirdly, she carried the baby and had a stillbirth. Now, look at this. She did not have an abortion. It was suggested to her. She decided to carry the baby. But she lost the baby. You know. And she still had to go through the child. But now if you have a child. You can know what that means. You know. When you push in a baby out. You know the pains you go through. Now for a mother to go through that pain. And still lose that child. Hmm. She was really devastated. So I'm going to stop right here today. And if you have anybody around you who have gone through an experience like that, I would like for you to, you know, move closer to the person, offer one or two words of prayer or comfort so that the person might feel so much better. And until next time when I drop another video, I am still Adeola and I say you all stay safe. Bye.